let's look at the US dollar slash the Polish Sloty. First off, read this disclaimer carefully and do your good deed of today by liking and subscribing. We are going into the Forex market, which is one of the, well, arguably it is the most important of all the markets. You could make a strong case that the derivatives market is, you know, a much bigger deal, but Forex is certainly in the second place. Hence, if you are not looking at Forex, you are really missing out on, you know, the most important uh, stuff. Okay. So here you can find the pair. US dollar, Polish, Sloty. So the US dollar is space, distance from 52 week low and 52 week uh, highs. If now go to the seasonality, we do see that uh, January, uh, historically it is, you know, st strong-ish for US dollar, but only in, you know, 60% of the time it closes higher than it opened. And uh, February and March are basically 50-50. It's only really here in May where you have, you know, very strong bullish uh, seasonal seasonality. And July and December where you have very strong bearish seasonality. One of the things that I found in the charts that were interesting is this very clear cycle patterns. So you see in gray here, this is called, you know, time cycles. They consist of a rising phase and a declining phase. And this is, a, this is a very universal phenomenon. We see this in how the universe, it kind of breeds, it expands and contracts like a lung. You see it in the seasons, in the nature. Uh, so, so this um, expansion, contraction cycles, it's a universal phenom phenomenon. Hence, it makes a lot of sense that we would also see this in other uh, markets. Like as an example, even the stock market. And you can quite clearly see that here, there is this seasonality. It rises and declines up and down. Though this is a different kind of seasonality than looking just at the months. But yeah, I think you can see the pattern yourself. And um, the recent cycles have been very consistent. Uh, long, down, long, down it suggests that there is more downside here to the US dollar. If we do zoom in here, we see this 200 week moving average in red. Test, 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 test. Then we succeed and get above and are managed and manage to use it as a support level. Support, then it fails. And now we are testing the underside of that key moving average again. So it is pretty clear looking at the chart that the red 200 week moving average it was super important here as a resistance level, then it became support, resistance, support, and now it is back being resistance. And we have seen that previously when it is a stubborn resistance level, it can lead to a pretty sharp uh, pullback. Hence, the bears have a setup here for something rather ambitious, especially when you take into account the previous cycles uh, where the declining phase were rather substantial in forex terms because in the forex market you can get a bunch of leverage and if we measure okay let's take this high then here down to here that's minus 11 ish percent which is a pretty big deal in the forex market because it is very easy to get massive leverage this decline phase was a whopping minus 22 23 ish that's very significant so far, we only quote unquote have, um, if you measure to this low, 16 ish uh, percent pullback. And if we were to actually, we could also measure this uh, pullback as well from the, from the high, 17 ish. So, so, so far, I would lean towards the bearish uh, side because we are below that key moving average. That also means though that if, if we were to get above it and use it as a support level, then uh, that could be pretty substantially bullish. The benefit for the bears here is that the 200 week moving average is negative. Here it is, here it is positive. Here it flattens out. Now it is negative. Hence, finding support on a declining, uh, moving average is, it's weaker. You know, it, it, it is a more problematic uh, support uh, level. 
So yeah, interesting stuff here. Uh, RSI is basically in the neutral zone, so there really is this battle now. Um, could be a very big move. Um, so far it is tilting in favor of the bears. Uh, they are the ones who have the leverage. They can, of course, screw, screw this up and um, see a breakout. Which So it, it is a, it, there will be a big move, that's the thing. PPO also just completely like uh, because of because it is measure, measuring the distance from the 200 week moving average we are almost dead center as far as correlations you have uh, yeah 9% correlation here with uh, the S&P 500 let's look at the daily data points there we have uh, minus 72 ish negative correlation looking here at the daily data points it is interesting to see that the, both the upper and lower end of the RSI is used actively, but you see that it is a rare, very rare for us to become extremely overbought or extremely oversold. If we zoom in, we can see that we are battling here this blue 100 day moving average. Um, we do have higher highs and higher, higher lows from this low. So the bulls are are trying something. The problem for the bull, for the bulls is that you have a sharply declining 200 day moving average here, which has been a key resistance level as you can see previously. Hence, um, yeah, it, even though it is good, you know, for, from the bullish perspective to see the bulls fighting here, they just do have this ver this uh, other battle right around the corner. So basically, to sum up, it is pretty clear that. This is the Bears game to lose. If they, they have what they need to pull something off, if they screw this up, then uh, yeah, obviously that would be good for the Bulls. Okay, so let's now look at some other correlations actually. Let's look at uh, the DX, uh, the correlation with the dollar index. Uh, so here you can see 84% uh, correlation uh, long term, 83-ish uh, uh, shorter time frame. Let's look at the link with the gold, GLD, like that. Here we have 32% correlation, long term, short term, we have uh, minus 39, negative. Uh, if we go here, let's also look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin, like that. Now let's take the index. So here we have minus 10-ish negative long term. Um, there is some cor correlation, but kind of no, no, kind of no correlation. It's almost, it's very close to zero. Minus 50% uh, shorter term. So definitively some some interesting correlations here, and I think that looking at correlations is something that it, it is very very important. Okay. So to sum up my take here on the US, US dollar Polish slot pair. I think it is pretty clear looking at you know the cycles um, and also you know to some extent the seasonality and uh, s definitively the technicals that the bears they do have leverage in this situation. The thing about the market is that there are always at least two primary forces you have the bulls and you do have the bears. You do also have the third category of people who profit from the security just moving sideways, but they are a smaller group. So primarily bulls and bears. The thing is that they are in constant battle, and that's why you'd, it is very beneficial to look at the market from both perspectives, because then you can see the complete chart, uh, the, the complete fundamentals, you know, the, the complete seasonality, and so on and so forth. In this situation, the expectation is that the bears will pull it off. That's the expectation. And uh, the reason why we could see a big bullish move, that's because we expect the bears to pull it off. Hence, if the bears do not show ambition in this situation where everything is just, is just laid out for them, we have the clear resistance level that have, that have been solid so far. If they are not able to do something big, then that will be then interpreted as a sign that the bears uh, don't have it in them. It's sort of like in poker, uh, you know, <laughs> the bulls win, they will, will be able to call their bluff.